Hi, welcome to today's episode of Music Babble. So today we're going to talk about the difference between black metal and death metal. Yes, there seems to be a confusion on that with most people. Well, you know, it was interesting because in the last episode, we, we kind of brought that up about how like in the late 90s, early 2000s, people were just getting all of these genres confused. And to this day, I think a lot of people still don't know or understand what the difference is between these two genres. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's actually, there's several differences. One is like within like the actual sound of the music, like there's actually like they sound different. I know it's funny though, you'll, you'll, some people who don't, usually people who don't like metal will say it all sounds the same, but if you are, if you like it or at least can be objective about it, you'll see they actually sound quite different. And then also, not one for one, but the lyrics tend to be focused around certain subjects with each of those genres. I know for death metal, it seems to be a lot about a lot of like gore. Like if you, that's, yeah. that's exactly what I was yeah. going to say. Yeah, it's about gore or uh, a lot of dark satanic stuff, right? Stuff, stuff of that kind of nature. It's not, um, but black metal. What's black metal about? Well, it, again, it's a, exactly depending on the band, but I want to say most of the black metal stuff tends to be satanic, actually, not so much the death metal from what I've observed anyway. Death metal is all about smashing skulls and blood and spilling out your guts and all this kind of gross things, in my opinion. Black metal seems to be again not one for one but focused around like oh satan duh. but not all of it some of it is actually can even be about like stories like like i was talking about how, like goth sometimes it's about stories but like black metal too it could be about like you know like medieval times type stuff ish from what i've seen well another thing so there isn't more than that it's not just the lyrical content but it's also the styling of the of the instruments yes uh black metal uh opens uh you know it welcomes keyboards with open arms whereas death metal doesn't really do that like you might find some death metal bands that have keyboards in them but that's rare black metal bands oh, you can find a, a huge portion of black metal bands that use keys mm -hmm. in their songs. That's very true. And death metal, it's all about the blast beats. No, blast well, beats for days. Well, they'll do that in death metal too. So that's that's something they have. Oh, I, I actually meant death metal. Yeah, death, death metal. metal. Yeah. Black metal does have black, blast beats, mm -hmm. but it's a little different. Um, one thing, here's something interesting about black metal. So what black metal will do is they'll play like very... Um, harmonious melodies, mm -hmm. right? Like something that you would find in maybe like a, you know, like a Bach piece or something like some Baroque music, mm -hmm. right? I, I'm not even kidding. Like you guys know, oh, yeah, yeah. I know there's someone out there that's thinking that, but it's true. Um, whereas death metal does more of this dissonant sound, this dissonant riffage where they'll take uh, like some jazz progressions and put those into the mix or use like a uh, chromatic scale, which if you don't know what that is, a chromatic scale is just, it's basically every single note on the fretboard. So it has this very strange, um, uncomfortable sound, right? Which death metal, if you listen to someone playing a chromatic scale, you go, oh uh, yeah, I see what he means. Whereas black metal is more about um, using certain types of scales and being very selective with the notes that they're using to get more of a harmonious sound. I learned something new today too. I'm saying. <laughs> but I totally agree with that though. Like you can naturally, if you were to like check out a band from each genre and compare it, um, some popular ones would be Cannibal Corpse for death metal. And then for black metal, Cradle of Filth would be like a popular, well-known one. If you wanted to go, well, wait a minute and then compare the two, you can start off with those two. Um, I like those bands and they're the more of the well-known of those genres, I would say. 
So, um, okay, so what did you listen to first? What got you, what were you interested in more, or at least first, black metal or death metal? First was death metal, definitely. And then black metal. And what were some of the bands? Well, Cannibal Corpse, of course. Uh, Six Feet Under, not as well known, but they're pretty amazing. Same singer, the original singer of Cannibal Corpse became the singer of Six Feet Under. FYI. Um, what were some other bands? There were so many back then. I don't know. With, um, I guess Bolt Thrower wouldn't be considered a death metal band. No, no they were death metal, definitely. Yeah? I would okay. think so. Yeah, Bolt Thrower would be yeah. considered death metal. They were earlier on, like an earlier yeah, type of band. They so were they earlier. Were like, so, but they were on that cusp of, mm-hmm. we can consider the death metal because of the type of music they were doing mm-hmm. was along those lines. So for the time period, it'd be considered death metal, I think. Yeah, I think so too. I really l- liked them a lot. They were one of my favorites for sure. I, I would almost even say they're buried in Cannibal Corpse. I know that's, you know... I'm just saying. I'm calling the cops. You should call the cops. <laughs> because they'll agree with me anyways. <laughs> no, they're going to get me. And then um, black metal, I got into a little bit later and more into. And even today, I, I prefer that over death metal, although I still love death metal. And then Cradle of Filth was, for a long time, my favorite black metal band. And then there's an interesting band. I like them. They're a little, they're like extra black metal, which is mayhem. Oh yeah, they made. There's a movie about those guys out now. Is there? Yeah, I forget what it's called. But if you guys know the name of that movie about the band Mayhem, uh, just comment in the comment section. All right, Uh, and don't forget to leave a like if you're watching this on Facebook. Okay, and also subscribe. Okay, if you're listening to this on on the podcast, on Anchor, or one of the other uh, podcast outlets. Yeah, make sure you just follow us on that. But yeah, it, I can't remember the name of this movie. It came out like, I think, two years ago. Oh, it's very new. Yeah, it's pretty new. I remember like when this whole thing went down, actually. It went down in the in the mid, well, it was, it was in the early to mid-90s. Right. And while I was like getting into all that stuff at the time, and then this whole thing went down and it was crazy because like these guys were like burning down churches. Mm -hmm. And weren't they actually like killing animals too? Or something like that. Or sacrificing or something like that. I I, I just remember the bassist in the band. Was it the bassist? The guitar? No. So the singer killed himself. He he, like shot Mm -hmm. himself in, in the head. And then the guitarist uh, took pictures of, of he found him in the house dead, took pictures of it, and then they used it as their album cover, right? Not even kidding. And the singer's name was uh, Dead. That was his name. And so he was like, yeah, Dead's dead. And supposedly the guitarist took the uh, pieces of his skull and then turned into a necklace. Right. I mean, these guys were like the real deal. These guys were like, they yeah. literally actually burned churches down. These guys were bad news. And then um, the, the guitarist wanted to start making snuff films. So he decided that he was going to kill the bassist in the band and uh, tried to take the, you know, they, they were having a bit of an issue anyway. So they, they went to some kind of scuffle. And then um, I think someone pulled out a knife. They got into a fight and eventually the bassist got a hold of the knife and stabbed the other guy in the skull and killed the guitarist. And then he went to jail for like, uh, I think like 20 years or 25 years. Wow, that's it, huh? Yeah, because they have in, I think that was in Norway. So in Norway, they actually, the law is no one can be in jail for more than a certain period of time, no matter what the crime, I know it's crazy. That's ridiculous. But I think also like, even though he went to jail for murder, the, the problem was that there was, he didn't initiate the fight. So there was a part of self-defense oh, there. Well, that kind of makes sense. But he still went to jail for, I think like 20 years, 20, 25 right. years. But there in that country, there's a limit to how many, how much time you can spend in jail. Well, I don't agree with that per se, but if, yeah, I mean, the, if there was some form of self-defense in there, that would make sense. You get a light, a lighter sentence then. So. Yeah, I don't know how the you know, I don't know the laws out there in that country, yeah. but it's definitely different in the United States. 
you kill someone like that, you're probably going to go to jail for life. Yes. Probably. But also, you know, the thing about uh, the United States is that if you can prove that there's a reasonable doubt that you tried to murder the guy and it was in self-defense, you could just walk free. Yeah. So, and I, from what I read about, cause I read, I read this back in like the nineties. Okay. There was yeah. no internet, nothing like that. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I, mean, I read this story, but to me, it sounded more like a self-defense situation anyway. So I mean, who knows? I mean, I mean, if you have more information on it by chance, feel free to comment, you know, and yeah, let us to, know. I want to find out about that movie, but that, I think that that movie, I don't know how accurate the movie is going to be to the real, real life situation. Yeah. But if you want check out that band mayhem, you'll find, I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. And it's funny, even when you listen to it, there is something kind of unsettling about it. Like compared to other bands, like I've listened to many different black metal bands and all of them I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. But then when the first time I ever put mayhem on, I was like, this is awesome. But then after a while I was like, there is something about it though. That's a little disturbing. And it's really hard. I couldn't put my finger on it at the time because the lyrics were like, you know, just like pretty much, it was a typical black metal band. It wasn't until years later. In fact, he told me, the story of what happened i went oh that explains a lot <laughs> yeah well uh, all right so one thing is this like with the black metal bands a lot of it is theater yes right? when they sing about all this this stuff you know they like romanticize death and blood yeah. you know that's that's part of the lyrical side of black metal is they romanticize all that stuff yeah right um but it's all theater they do it as an act right and these guys were not acting. It was no. like they they really felt this way. They this is their thing, you know. It was, and it wasn't even like romanticizing their lyrics. It was just no. straight up like you know, sacrifice Satan and like it. it I mean, listen to uh, a few songs, and you should let us know what you think. Yeah, let us know what you think, and then and these guys were inspired by a band called Venom. I don't know if anyone oh, knows yeah. those guys, but that's that's what inspired them in fact venom came up with the name black metal yeah they, they put it in like they would put it in their songs the word black metal it was it's actually a song called black metal by venom it is actually a really good song in fact my old band used to cover that song oh really yeah which one Black metal. no which band? no shot oh, him of course that's yeah, yeah, more yeah. of it no characters would never do that no. anyway like, no way but yeah it was cool um Death metal, though, on the other hand, yeah, totally different. Unless we're talking about Deicide, Deicide, well, that's a good band to bring up actually because they had kind of both elements going on. But I would definitely consider them more of a death metal band. Oh, no, they're definitely a death metal band without a doubt. Yeah, but the, the singer Glenn Benton, mm -hmm. he, he took uh, a cross, this was his grandmother's cross, and he heated it up. And he literally shoved it on his forehead and burned an upside down crucifix into his into his forehead. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, this guy was like, I mean, he it was more like he hated Christianity rather than being like. So if you look at the lyric content, I mean, they talk a lot about Satan. They talk a lot about Satan. A lot of yeah. Satan stuff. But he, I think, he did it more to like jab at Christians more so than anything else. Yeah, he wasn't an actual like Satanist or anything like that. I don't think so anyway. No, I don't I don't think he was a Satanist. Like, I think he was an atheist, if anything. Yes. Yeah, he's more of an atheist. That's what I, I mean, think. He's using all the satanic stuff to just kind of take a jab at uh you know Christianity and yeah, Christians. To be a dick, basically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. So But the music was really good. Dead by Dawn. Come on. Yeah. I think that's like one of the most famous death metal songs ever. Hammer like, Smash Face, I think. Face Hammer Smash one. Face. That's in Ace Ventura, the first one. Oh, that's right. It was. Hammer Smash Face by mm -hmm. Cannibal Corpse. Mm -hmm. All right. So back in those days, right, this this is the funny thing. So when these people started doing like those real deep growls and yeah. those high-pitched screams and all those shrieks, um, people – thought they were using some kind of studio trick to create that effect. Mm -hmm. So what they actually, if you look at like the old deicide tapes, mm -hmm. right. Or the cannibal corpse tapes, they actually say there were no 
uh, sound effects used on the vocals. They had to explain that to people like, no, the singer is really doing that himself. It was all organic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and the whole scream thing, you know where all that comes from? Actually, I don't. It's, this is actually really funny. People don't know this. It actually comes from a Who song. I swear, this is, it sounds so random. You go, the Who? You mean like Tommy? Pinball Wizard? What? Yeah, those guys. You said a Who song, so which song? It was, um, oh my God, what is it called? Um, it's about a cat. I swear, it's a, it's a song about a cat. Now I have to look it up. Do you, know the you don't know the name of the song? I can't remember the name of it, but it, it's like right there. Oh, man, what the heck? I'm assuming that's like an early on one. Boris. Boris the Cat. Boris the Cat. Boris the Cat by The Who. Because in one of the parts, the bass player goes, Boris the Cat. And then people would just try to emulate that later on. Now, of course, that came, that was actually a monk thing. Right, I think he was trying to emulate something like the ancient monks used to, like oh, do these really low singing things, oh. which, and then it turned into Boris, right? And then uh, other guys tried to emulate that, like um, what's his name, Chris Barnes, right? Glenn Benton from Deicide, and then it just took off from there. Now it's a thing. Yeah. Now, now, if you listen to a metal band, you expect to hear that. Yes, you do nowadays. Modern now. ones. If you listen to like Metallica, you know that you're not going to hear that stuff. Yeah, a lot of modern, not death metal bands, but just heavy metal bands have kind of ad adopted that. And they mix it with like those with the non-growling vocals too. Yeah. Well, what's cool is that now there's all these techniques to do it properly. Yeah. You know, like guys like Chris Barnes and Glenn Benton, those guys were doing it properly. But other people, like tons of other people, just never did it right. Mm -hmm. And they messed up their voices doing that. But now there were like some people who had, oh, you know what? If it, it's more like an operatic singing style, believe it or not. And um, started coming up with exercises and stuff to really make that, wait, I guess, more efficient. But more you know so that people could singers could last longer yeah but they won't damage themselves because that can hurt after a while go ahead and try it for a while and watch it actually hurts after a while if not done properly yeah so i had a friend he was doing that one night and i'm like no i think you're i think you're doing it wrong he's like no 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 i got it right and like maybe 10 minutes later he's like coughing <laughs> like that and they go see you're doing it wrong you're doing it wrong it was josh by the way but josh oh josh yeah of course well, <laughs> i kept telling him, i was like i think you're doing it wrong he's like oh, no. and he's like coughing and stuff i'm like yeah i see oh my god it's because you're using your throat to do it you're like, <laughs> yeah. josh if you're listening shout out to you so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh man calling you out so um josh Anyway, anyway, so back to, we went off topic a little bit, death metal, black metal. What are some bands that you like from both genres? All right, so, um, I mean, Cradle of Filth, I think, was my favorite black metal band. Yeah. All right, the first Opeth album, believe it or not, is very black metal. What was the first one? The first one it had a rose on it, or no, it had a flower, some kind of flower. You don't remember the name of it. Sorry, excuse me. I don't remember the name of it. I don't know. The first Opeth album was very black metal -y. Um, Like it was like a combination of black metal and death metal. Mm -hmm. Like he sang, he sings more of like a death metal style, but the music was more of a black metal. Like a feel, had like the elements of Yeah, because it had all these like harmonies and these dark riffs. And it got heavy too, but it never got like death metal type of heavy. Right. Okay. You know? I would say he tried to be like Morbid Angel, but was too harmonious to reach that. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, let's see. So, well, that was Cradle Filth was my favorite black metal band. Um, when it came to death metal bands, I mean, there was a lot. I mean, there was Deceased, 
they were they were pretty good. I like those guys a lot. And then Deicide, I mean, Deicide. I think, mm-hmm. Deicide, I think, played like when I when I saw them, they were like probably the best band, at least the best the best death metal band I've ever saw play live. And then um, well, Cannibal Corpse, everyone likes of course. Cannibal Corpse. Everybody, even even your grandmother likes Cannibal Corpse. She sure does. Right. She won't admit it though. No. Um, let me see. So we said six feet under earlier too. Did you listen to them? Oh, I actually listened. That was one of the first bands that I ever heard. Death metal bands yeah. I ever heard was six feet under. There was, uh, so my friend had bought some CD mm-hmm. and, um, we listened to it and there was a song called, we, he actually bought the CD because there was a song called, they called lycanthropy. Which is like the werewolf disease okay mm-hmm. so lycanthropy would mean uh if you have that disease that illness you turn into a, a werewolf so we bought he bought he literally bought the album because that's because song, of that because oh, that's of that hilarious. song and we like looked at the case the cover of the cd and it looked kind of badass so we're like all right let's check it out we listened to it and we're like well this is really good holy crap so we we listened to the whole album of course of course lycanthropy was mm-hmm. like our theme song that year mm-hmm. i'm serious <laughs> it was really our theme song and then um and then we found out like oh that that the singer from that band is in was in another band before this one so we started buying that band cds because i think at the time that was the only album that six feet under had so um so we started buying cannibal corpse albums and it was like holy crap this this is awesome and then uh found deicide uh bolt thrower you mm-hmm. know a bunch of other bands i can't even i don't know i could i could i there's so many bands oh my god possessed by the way the guitarist the original guitarist from the band possessed became the guitarist for primus oh i didn't know that <laughs> yeah. talk about a 180. wow yeah, and Possessed was an actual death metal band from the 1980s, okay? They were like a legit death metal band. I mean, they they did the whole thing. I mean, first of all, they're called Possessed. Second of all, they did the whole death metal thing, right? Third of all, on the album, it had pictures of, um, like, the guys were in um, coffins going into the ground. Right, that's such a death metal thing. Very typical. And that was in the eighties. So they, these guys were a bit of ahead of their times. And then of course the guitar player leaves uh, that band and then uh, starts Primus with uh, Les Claypool. I guess it's safe to say he enjoyed more than one type of music genre. Yeah, that's okay. Most of these guys do. That's true. One of the one of the guitar players from Cannibal Corpse released a country album. What? That's crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That the is bald, crazy. The bald guitar player guy. I think he left the band actually. But um yeah, he did a country album back in like I think 2004, 2000. Yeah, something like that. 2004, wow. 2005, he did a country album. Did he do a country? Maybe he I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he did a country album. There you go. I didn't know that either. Yeah. But I know he listened to country for sure because he was talking about it. I was like, country music, really? I think he did a country album. I well, I mean, I mean, even us, we even listen to a wide variety of things. So you know, country music. Well, not maybe not that well. Wide, no, but... we'll have to get someone on that knows more about country music. We'll talk to them. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. I think I know a few people. Um, anyways, let's go, let's talk about black metal a little bit more for a minute. There's this one band that I actually wanted to bring up. A lot of people haven't heard of them. It's called Unanimated. I think I still have the CD somewhere. I've never here. heard of them. Anyway, um, I stumbled across them by accident, actually. This was like years and years ago. I was in some random CD store and not far from here either, but I think they're closed down now. Anyway, um, they had a lot of like black metal CDs, like a lot. Like they didn't, it wasn't a huge CD store where they had like everything. It was small-ish and they were going out of business at the time. So they had like, you know, it was um, kind of barren in there. And they had a whole bunch of CDs of this one band called Unanimated. And when you first look at it, they just, 
it's not like a typical you know black metal band cover it would they looked like just like a heavy metal band so i was like oh okay check it out i brought it home oh my god my expectations were not very high they blew me away they were so good if you've heard of them you understand what i mean if you haven't try looking them up on youtube or something they're so good in fact i think after this i'm going to show you because they're they're really 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 good and i love when you buy a cd with not high expectations and then you know it's like you realize what you stumbled upon it's like oh i invested in something awesome you know cds were expensive back at the time what was the name of the album I don't remember the name of the album, to be honest, and that's, I wish I did. I just remember the album. It was the band standing in like, a, almost like a jungle, like rain, not jungle, rainforest, like surroundings, very green. And when you first put it on, it's like they have like this intro and it's very like, not black metal. And then the next song just goes into this black metal riff and the guy comes out with the black metal vocals and i'm like oh my god sweet you know, with that high pitch yeah song. yeah i used to do that i you know there's a it's a lot of people then this is i know like some of the guys who do black metal they'll do that high pitch screaming and then years later they don't do it anymore yeah and i for for me i was like oh he just he just gave up on it he's a wuss but no, you know, like I used to do all that stuff. I was in bands and I would do that shrieking, like, mm -hmm. I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I really can't do it anymore. My voice got too deep and now I can't do it. It's weird. It's like this little shift in my voice and it didn't happen. It, it was like throughout my 20s, no problem. I could do it in my 30s. I started to lose it. And I, I think I was about 35. I really I just couldn't do it anymore. When I was about 35, I was like, wow, I just can't. Nope, it's gone. So, like, um, I remember uh, Philip Anselmo from Pantera. Mm -hmm. He used to do this, like, real high-pitched screaming. He couldn't even do it after that. So when, when they recorded, like, Cemetery Gates, he did all this, like, really, what? You know, I'm not going to do that. I but, remember that. Yeah, but he couldn't do that. So, so when they would do it live, he would just be like, Bleh! That was it, you know, he couldn't do it. So, you know, it's it's a real thing. You, you would think, and that's the interesting thing about male biology, you would think that, well, he's uh, he's an adult, he's 25, that's it. No, like your men, men's body keeps changing. It's like kind of strange. It's like, we're still becoming men, like, you know. It's because they never I'm, grow up. We're, I'm still growing <laughs> up right now. Yes, you are. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I'm getting there, don't worry. That's the real reason why ladies know what I'm talking about. Men going, she's just. See how sexist this is? It's totally sexist. <laughs> Are you offended yet? <laughs> Good, go ahead. Um, all right, so yeah, that high pitched screaming thing, when a guy can keep that, that's really valuable for a black metal band. Yeah. I think like, uh, what's his name, Danny Filth? Danny Filth is a perfect example. I mean, to be honest, I haven't heard anything like very recent of them, so I don't know if he still does it. But I mean, he wasn't very young, even like on the last album, I remember him and he was still doing it. So. Yeah. Well, there, there is the thing about practicing to maintain it. Yeah. And I wasn't, I'll be honest, I was not practicing mm -hmm. it. I mean, it was kind of inappropriate for me to to do it at the time yeah. because where I was working, uh, it would kind of be frowned upon. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. If you work in an office and you start doing like black metal screams, you know, it, it was funny. Like I, I was just like listening to something in an elevator one day and people were like, Oh my God. I'm like, I'm like, I was like, you know, I can do that. Right. Like I play, cause I'm a, I'm a metal musician. I can play that stuff. I can scream like that. Yeah. Michael. It's a no no. Definitely a no no. So then um who was another one? Black metal or death metal? Oh, I don't care. No, well <sighs> Dean uh, Uber gear. Oh yeah. They're an guys. amazing band. And you know what's funny? They didn't do a lot of the high pitch screaming so much. 
No, he it was did more of like a mid-range. Yeah. A mid-range kind of like, like that. Yeah. <sighs> they were another great band. And, okay, I just want to talk about one of their albums for a second because mm -hmm. it's so awesome. And it's an earlier album. It's called Stormblast. I, I don't know if it's their first album, but it's one of their very early on albums. Check that album out because it actually sounds very different than their later stuff. They didn't have, they had the keyboards in there, but it wasn't like the, um, whatchamacallit. It wasn't quite as like theatrical and like technical sounding. It was more plain, like just the basics. It was, you know, they got the guitar, they got the bass, they got the drum, they got the singer, and they have a keyboard player, but it wasn't like this, all this fancy stuff yet, you know? It was oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It's more like a bare, bare bones type of black Exactly. Metal. And they have one song that's right. just like piano and like, or keyboard rather, with like a little bit of, um, how would I say it? Like sound effects or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's all it was. Soundscape exactly, stuff. Exactly, some soundscape stuff. No lyrics. And I, I think it's one of the best songs on the album. It was such a great song. So if, check out Stormblast, the whole album. It's awesome. I have it or at least used to have it. And if I don't, we're buying it. <laughs> well, we have, I mean, I don't know if you can see, we have a huge stack of CDs there. We have our CDs here. And there's more, lots uh, more. Oh, yeah, there's more. There's some down there. We have, they're everywhere. We have a whole case somewhere oh. full of them. Yeah, now I'm like, I'm like, right away I saw a oh, and it got exhumed. There you go, exhumed. That's one. What else we got here? See, now we're cheating. We're looking. No, yeah, no cheating, no cheating. You have oh, to do this off the top of your head. No, I'm cheating. You gotta use, go. oh, look at this. Death Metal's greatest hits. We got best <laughs> of. All right, no, but no, we're not gonna do it. But anyway, so that, that would be cool. So that's the album you recommend? For Demi Borgir, that's, I would definitely list, I would check out their other albums too, but that album, I would definitely highly recommend because it's, I think it's one of their best albums and it's a very simple album, if that makes sense. All right, it's, now, question, where would you classify Children of Bodom? That's very hard. Somewhere in between. Cause they're not, yeah. Like they have a lot of black metal elements, especially their first album. Yeah. And they have a keyboard, but they're not. They're not. Uh, they're not a black metal band. They're not really a black metal band, and they're, they're not, not really a death metal no. band either. Like the singing would be more along the lines of black metal. It would be. But the guitars is more like a thrash metal. Yeah. Something. It's they're. They're their own thing. They're their own. They're their own metal. That's right. They're I children of there's, Bodom. There's probably some kind of name for it out there. I guess they might be considered. They're probably called black metal. I get it. I mean, that, I have to look maybe that up. if anything, but I don't consider them a black metal band. I'm definitely going to check that one out. I want to see how they're categorized. Okay, because no, this isn't cheating. This is this is uh, just getting the information. So what are you saying? What are they classified as? What genre? I'd like to see, yeah, like I'm going to see what genre they're classified in as far as metal goes. Okay, they're called a melodic death metal band. So, okay, fine. Wow. I can see that, I guess. I mean, that's a stretch, but. Melodic death metal band. That's what they're called. I mean, I would think of like, okay, Death Clock from uh, Metalocalypse. I would consider that that's a melodic death metal band. Yeah. Right? Children of Bodom. I, I would guess just from the, the the vocal styling, you wouldn't consider it death metal. Um, plus, the music isn't dark enough no, to, it's to be really considered not. death metal. But that's why they call it, they put the word melodic in front of it to yeah. kind of fix that issue. It's like happy death metal. Definitely not happy. No, they use a lot of minor, uh, not just minor, but harmonic minor scales, which... It's just a change in one note to give it a darker sound. Yeah. So. Well, they're definitely happier than Cannibal Corpse. Oh yeah, no, Cannibal Corpse is like they'll just play every note that's on the on the fretboard. Uh, but these guys will, you know, like, I guess you could say, all right, I could see why they're called melodic death metal because mm -hmm. it's kind of you got to put them into some kind of category. Yeah, exactly. So even if you have to, like, kind of, I don't want to say invent, but you know. I just tuck that away over there. It's like, we'll, we'll call you guys that. Yeah. That works. There you go. Well, we're not going to call you black metal. 
Because they don't sing about any of that stuff that the black metal guys sing about. No, they really don't. I mean, they, they talk about darkness and they talk about, you know, stuff like that. Hate. Uh, yeah. But it's not. It's not the same. Not it's really same. not. And if you haven't listened to them, check them out and then you'll just see for yourself. All right. So one album I would recommend that everyone listen to is Once Upon a Cross by Deicide. Okay. Yep. For as a death metal album, that is definitely an album you should listen to. I think from beginning to end, it's just it's hard hitting, it's in your face, and it's just pure death metal. It's like it was like it was it was like it's probably one it's one of the best death metal albums out there. That one and I then, agree. Eaten Back to Life by Kettle. Oh, that, was, that was the first album by them I ever got. Really? Yeah. I remember I was like, I was 14 years old when I got that album. And I played the hell out of it. Like every day. I had one of those little like portable CD players. Remember those? Mm -hmm. That couldn't fit into your pocket. So I just used to hold it. And oh my God, it was so awesome. Anyway, good times. Oh yeah, you know one thing about that, but about those albums is that you could listen to this stuff. If people knew what they were singing about, they'd be like mortified by mm -hmm. what they were saying. But the beauty was that no one understood what they were saying except for the listener, and sometimes even the listener didn't know. I can understand those guys because I remember someone be like, "Can you actually understand what he's saying?" I'm like, "Yeah, he just said." Uh, I probably shouldn't say it because uh, we'll probably get uh, taken down off of YouTube if I say <laughs> any of the lines from any of those songs. Well, they were relatively easy to understand. Deicide? No, um, Cannibal Corpse. I think they both were. I thought Deicide well, was Deicide easier Deicide was probably to more easy. Yeah, now that I think about it, they were easier. You know who was hard, a little hard to understand? And I love this band so much. Cal Decapitation. Yeah, I have no idea what that guy's they, ever said. He, yeah, they're hard to understand. I've I've had to like look up their lyrics in the packs before, but they're such a great band. Oh my god! Yeah, oh my god! Brutal. Yeah, and you remember earlier I was saying who was I said Deicide was like probably one of my favorites. Well, I kind of take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Cattle decapitation is probably if if I had to pick favorites, we don't like to pick favorites. But if we had to pick a favorite, I would say they're they're really they're just great. They're definitely in the top five for me anyway. They were good. I like them. I I it's just the whole the D side captured me. It was that was the band that really got me mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm into death metal. Like I heard Six Feet Under. We listened to this, uh, Cannibal Corpse too, and we're like, yeah, yeah, this is good stuff. But it didn't grab me until I heard Once Upon a Cross. Once I heard that album, I was sold. I was sold on death metal after that. That's the album that got me into death metal for sure. And that album came out, I think, in 91, 92, something like that. I think it was 91. I don't remember. Maybe 93. I think that maybe that was Serpents of the Light, but which was probably like the worst death metal album. But I know what happened. That's actually a funny story. So DSI came out with all these great albums and then they came out with this really, really bad album, right? Uh, Serpents of the Light, which actually had some good songs on there, but the overall album just kind of sucked. Why would you say that? I'm curious why you say that. Well, the production quality was a lot cleaner. Okay. So the guitars didn't have like the kind of bite that they had on the other albums. And it seemed like that they, well, I felt like they were just kind of writing this album to because they had to. So they had to make an album. And that's basically what happened was that they didn't want to be with this record label anymore and they still had a contract with them. So they just like put that album together to release it so they could get out of the contract with these guys. Well, so they're like, we'll give you the crappiest music we can possibly write while staying death metal and screw you guys over so we can get out of this stupid contract with you. <laughs> you do what you gotta do so like we're gonna save all our bad songs for this album and then we're then we're out we'll write good material again well there you have it i'm pretty sure that's how it went down okay anyways so yeah those are our album recommendations check those out mm -hmm. and make sure again make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time